name is Aaron Tainter. You might also know me from the Hacker Shack YouTube channel. I'm starting this channel because I also really like music. While I myself am still developing as a musician, I'm hoping that the videos that I post on this channel will help us learn together. I'm starting off with the Nashville number system because I feel like it's a great intro video and it really helps you understand how to relate chords to different keys. It was 1957 in Nashville, Tennessee and RCA Studio B just opened on Music Row. The recording industry was thriving at the time, and many musicians were trying to cash in on the gold rush by playing their instruments in three to four, three hour recording sessions a day. With so much time spent in these sessions, it was nearly impossible to produce arrangements for each song. Neil Matthews, a vocalist for the singing quartet, The Jordanaires, began leveraging a simple number system to simplify chord progressions during the many sessions at Studio B. His number system allowed instrument players to easily transcribe a chord progression from one key to another if the singer changed keys. Not only did it save time, but it also became a common language between musicians in the Nashville session industry for many years to come. Neil and his quartet paved the way for other session artists like Charlie McCoy, whose music ended up on famous albums by Elvis Presley, Bob Dylan, and Johnny Cash. In essence, the Nashville number system is an easy way to transpose chord progressions from one key to another using a simple sequence of numbers. The distance between the numbers in the sequence is synonymous with the intervals or distance between pitches in the song. By transposing the chord progressions using the number system, you're effectively transposing the pitches in the song but keeping the intervals. I'll give you a simple example. So if I start off in the key of G major, my first chord would be G major. I'm going to do a simple chord progression where I go 1, 6, 4, 5. So the 6th chord would be an E minor, the 4th chord would be a C major, the 5th chord would be a D major, and then back to that G major. I can transpose that easily to any key I want. Let's pick a uh, key of E major. So my first chord would be an E major, the 6th chord would be a D flat minor, the fourth chord would be an A major, and the uh, fifth chord would be a B major, and then back to the E major. So it sounds very similar, it's just in a different key. As you can see, I've basically shifted those pitches down to uh, E major. Before we learn how to do that on the guitar, I'm going to quickly jump to the piano and explain some music theory, because this will make a lot more sense after I do that. All right, so now we're on the piano, and I'm just going to quickly go over some basics uh, in case you're not familiar. There are 12 notes total in an octave, and uh, this is middle C, so we can start at C, and if we play this note over here, that's an octave higher. So there are five black keys in an octave, and there are seven white keys in an octave. You know, starting off at C, it's one full step, two full steps, a half step, another full step, full step, full step, half step, and that's a scale. So each of these keys have a letter that represents them, and the letters are uh, in order. So if I start off at C, this is D, E, F, G, goes back to A, B, and then C. We can play that scale uh, you know, starting on different root notes, uh, but if we do that, we still have the same distances between the notes in the scale. So full step, full step, half step. If I start uh, at D, it would be full step, full step, full step, half step. Each of these letters in the scale corresponds to a number in the Nashville number system. If I start on the first uh, key, which is C, that would be the first chord in the Nashville number sequence. That's a one. In a scale, your first chord is usually major. So when I play a chord, this is a C major chord. You have a first note, and then you play the third relative note. So one, two, three, third note, and the fifth note four, five. So that's called a major triad. So the first chord is always major. The second chord is always minor. So you can hear how that sounds kind of sad instead of happy, sad. Second chord is minor. Third chord is minor. Fourth chord major. Fifth chord major. Sixth chord major, or minor, sorry. And the seventh chord is diminished which means that both the third and the fifth are lowered by one. So that's the major, this is a diminished chord, and then we go back to that C. If I say, play the third chord in the scale, I would play an E minor, because it's one, two, three, it's the third note in the scale. 
little far to say, play the sixth note in the scale, be an A minor, because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. A minor. If it's the seventh, it's a diminished B, and the one would be a C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm not going to go through all the basics of the piano today, but you can see it's kind of easy to understand how chords relate to a key because everything's really linear on the piano. Going back to the guitar, we can play the same C major scale that we did on the piano. Like the piano, the first chord is a major, second chord is a minor, third chord is minor, fourth chord is major, fifth chord major, seventh chord diminished, and the last chord is major. It's the first chord again. When reading the Nashville number system, it's always assumed that the numbers represent the relative major and minor chords in the scale. So if I say a two, usually means that the chord's going to be minor unless otherwise noted. Now going back to that one, six, four, five chord progression that we did earlier, this time in the key of C, we can use the scale to determine which chords to play. So if we start out at the first uh, note, which is C, we play a C major uh, chord because the first uh, note in the scale is always a major chord. And then we count all the way up to the sixth chord. Uh, so if we go up the scale here, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, which is the sixth chord. And that's minor because the sixth is always minor. Then we go down to the fourth chord. So six, five, four, four is major go up to the five chord, which is also major. So it was F major, and then G major. Then we can go back to the C, C major. Music in the same genre usually follows similar chord progressions. As you get used to using the system, you'll realize that you can play just about any genre of music in any key. For instance, if you want to tell your band, hey, play a blues riff in the key of B, they'll have some options for chord progressions in that key. To give you an example, I know that Blues songs typically follow a 1 5 4 chord progression. So if I want to play a blues riff in the key of E, I can easily transpose that to the key of A as well. I can also play a different genre of music with another number sequence. Here's a funky sounding song with a 6-3-4 chord progression. You'll notice that I said the last song was in the key of D minor instead of the key of F. That's because all major keys have a relative minor key. They use the same chords, they just revolve around the minor chords in the key rather than the major chords. I'm going to play one more chord progression, and this is for a rock song. You might have noticed that that seventh chord in the last progression had a special notation on it. It's not always the case that all the chords in the progression will exactly follow the relative chords in the key. So if you want to specify a notation to signify a chord that's outside of that, uh, the chords in that key, uh, you can do that. In this case, we added an uppercase M, which signifies a major chord. For example, if I want to indicate a seventh chord in the sequence, I can write a superscript seven on the chord. In this case, I'm going to do an E7 chord. A major seven is indicated by a triangle seven, so I can play a E major seven. Minors or majors outside of the standard chords in the key can be signified with lowercase or uppercase Ms respectively. If I want to signify that it's an E minor, I would just add a lowercase M to the chord. And if I want to signify that it's a major chord, I would add a uppercase M to the chord. There are many other variations of chord progressions for 9th, 11th, and suspended chords. And I don't have time to go through all of them now, but I will make sure to link a list of those notations in the description. Here's an example of a more complex chord progression in C.
Well, there are many notations on that particular chord progression. I can play the same chord progression without the notations, and it sounds very similar. So you can see the notations don't change the fundamental structure of the sequence, they just add some extra embellishments. There's a slight learning curve to the Nashville number system, but once you figure it out, you'll have the tools you need to become a self-sufficient musician. Once you understand the patterns, you'll learn how to play just about any genre of song in any key. It's a quick path to understanding how chords relate to each other in a certain key, so it enables you to start writing your own music. To put it simply, the Nashville number system is a key to unlock unlimited possibilities of your own musical creation. And who wouldn't want to know how to use that key? And with that, I'll end this video with a quick outro jam. If you enjoyed watching, please consider subscribing so that you get notified of my new videos. But thanks for watching.